Hey folks, thanks for joining us for this TWIP uh, Pro Photo Critique number 127. This week's topic is the mundane. And uh, yeah, harder than uh, I think a lot of people realize that it was a deceptively difficult topic to yeah. uh, to create art out of mundanity or mundanity. Troy Miller, do you see some of the see the submissions that came in? Pretty good, huh? I do. It they definitely rose to the challenge. There is no doubt about it. There is some great images in here. So we got a lot of mundane people in the community, huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, they did. They did a good job. I mean, I'm excited to look through these, and, and you know, it's it's interesting. This kind of topic is, you know, the the subjective to the extreme, right? Because yeah, what's course. mundane to me may not be mundane to you, et cetera, et cetera. So, right. yeah, I realize that, but yeah, it's good. So the 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 sort of um, spirit of this particular one was just to look around and see things that. You know, you may just overlook every day and see the art or beauty in little things. You know what I thought? I thought we were going to see a lot more macro photographies. Even in the thumbnail, I used a macro shot in there. I thought we'd see it because you could just put a macro lens on a camera and just, you know, sit down somewhere and get 35 shots of patterns and textures right. and things that are mundane. We didn't see that many. That was interesting. We didn't see that many, if at all, uh, macro shots in there. So. No, no, and it was great. I mean, there's a lot of creativity in here. Yeah, even yeah. even as I would say, even as good as like our open categories when we do the open, um, this is this kind of fell into that as many as we got and uh, the creativity that was poured into these things. So, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, well, before we do the screen share, uh, who's in the chat? We've got low bass guys in there. Michael Duray, what's up? Uh, Michael Voy, that's a new a new face icon in there. Uh, Armando from Brazil is in there. Uh, Michael Rhino, uh, Casimir, yeah. So people are people are coming in, and remember, folks in the chat, make sure you you give us a thumbs up on this video so that uh, you know it feeds the YouTube algorithm. Even though interesting, just FYI, inside baseball, when I promote these critiques, I consider these critiques sort of a, a Twit Pro member benefit for the most part, even though they're unlisted or they're public on YouTube. I consider the interaction kind of a TWIP Pro benefit, so I don't send out uh, an email to the entire TWIP population, the TWIP army. I send it out to just the community. So uh, that's why we, you know, we we tend to have just a handful of people in the chat room. If I was to send it out to the entire TWIP army, it'd be a party in here. So <laughs> let's <laughs> yeah, let's keep it as a little cocktail mixer, All right? So. Let's go ahead and share the uh, the screen on the old MacBook Pro over here. There we go. All right, you ready for this, Troy Miller? I'm, I am ready. All right, I'm gonna reload the screen just to make sure I have the latest and greatest ones in there. And sorting by date created, thank you very much. All right, the first one is from Joshua Sommerfeld. Look at that. That is See? cool. See, Look at that. mundane, right? Mundane. You would walk by this a million times and you would never see it, but that's by design, right? <laughs> yes. Well, that's the intention. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see me. I'm not here. I am not the yeah. moth you're looking for. <laughs> I am not here. Yeah, exactly. I'm not the moth you're looking for. That's crazy. I love the. I love that. This is, a, this is a cool shot. I love what Joshua did with the intentional framing and the symmetry of the shot. It's really, it's really cool. It's like, yeah. you know, you the symmetry is giving away the moth's camouflage. If, if this was sort of a random shot, you know, or randomly cropped, we'd have more trouble finding the pattern in there. But because it's, because it's symmetrical, we can easily kind of, our brains can easily pick it out, you know, along with the shadow and the lighting. But yeah, I, I yeah. dig it. It's crazy. Mothra. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mothra. And, you know, we don't have scale, too. So this is one of those things, unless you're familiar with what this creature's size is, uh, we don't have any scale, which is kind of interesting because it could be huge or it could be really, really tiny. Um, I, I love it. I love how everything's kind of blended again. I do like the crop, like you said, how it's symmetrical and it's just all centered in there. It's a yeah, fun shot. Yeah. yeah. It's furry. It just makes you want to pet it, right? <laughs> uh, no. I don't think <laughs> I don't think Not really. You don't want to pet Mothra? Come on, Mothra. Isn't Mothra in the in the Godzilla movies? Isn't he like Godzilla's or she like Godzilla's girlfriend or something or at least ally? 
Not in the la- not in the latest couple. No, he gets his butt kicked a little bit. I don't know. I don't well, know. Mothra Mothra g- gave up her her power for Godzilla in the last one, and Godzilla went super nuclear. Remember that one? And just like yeah, that's melted true. That, everything. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Hey, um, low base guys in the chat. Low base guys says, "Well, I totally blasted this out in a couple of communities." You're, I'm happy you blasted it out. My my comment about it being for members only is that I only promote it to to members you know so you're happy to share it with whomever um okay let's move right along hey craig colvin's in here hey craig colvin nice all right next shot is eric pronsky and eric says chair by a window image taken in my hotel room in cholua mexico or in mexico before the shutdown what is mx what state is that that's not a state is that just Mexico? I don't know. I'm going to guess that's Mexico. <laughs> uh, before the yep. shutdown, the, the window had... That's what the best problem with acronyms. The window had a white covering providing this terrific diffuse light coming through. Shot with Sony. Let's take a look. That is great. Yeah, I like the symmetry of this one, too. That is, like, super abstract. I, I, I'm just looking at this one right now. I would probably... I don't know. I, I kind of want it cropped a little bit tighter. I like the reflection, but I like the chair more. Um, but this reminds me of a series I did of hotel rooms, all abstract stuff in hotel rooms. Oh. And this, yeah, this is super cool. I love the the monochromatic nature, the simple graphical design, you know, the graphical intention that's going on in there. So it's really nice. Even the blown highlight in the middle and the back is OK. You know, we don't have to see anything in there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I was going to comment on that as well. That the This is one of the few times that just completely blown out highlights becomes a compositional element, right? Right, right. I, I, I would probably crop the top, though, down below the, you know, like the, the sash or the curtain holders. Um, e- even if you wanted to leave the reflection, I would probably crop the top off, though, you know, about half. There's just not a lot going on up there. So get it get it tighter on the chair, move the chair up in the image. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I know. Uh, oh, hey, uh, Kai's in the chat. Hey, Kai. Um, the uh, I know Craig Colvin's probably looking at this shot. It's like, oh, that's a fantastic shot. It just needs a, a nude model <laughs> sitting on that chair. <laughs> that's what he's thinking. Yeah. Uh, no, I yeah. dig it. I dig it. I love the color treatment or lack thereof. I love the I love the leaning into the blown highlights. And I even like the angle. The angle of the chair is kind of cool. That looks intentional as well, shooting it straight on with the seat so that you just kind of get the, the yep. front plane of the seat versus, you know, seeing it in three dimensions. Very cool. Yeah, there's a lot you could do with this. It's silhouettes are awesome. I mean, this is basically a silhouette of the chair, mm-hmm. and silhouettes yeah. are so much fun because you 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 can leave more to the imagination. And I would even say play with this, where you're going to block the shadows up even more. You know, pull the blacks down or the shadows down, and let it silhouette even more, and you get some more of that graphical element in there. But very nice, very abstract. I like it. Nice. Oh Good job. crap! Look at this. So I want to. I got to go back. I know we don't do this, but going back to Joshua's shot here in the chat, Joshua says, uh, "What does he say? He says this. He says it's the size of the palm of your hand." <laughs> like, oh my gosh! That is Mothra. Wow! Yeah, I, I don't want to meet one of those. <laughs> that'll, that'll helicopter you off to its babies or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's crazy. Wow, All that right. Is... Thanks, sir. Thanks for adding that perspective, literally, Joshua. All right, next shot is from Ernest. And Ernest says, mundane, sometimes it's nice little break to clear the mind. Very cool. Wow. I can almost smell the cigarettes. Yeah, I can definitely smell that. Yeah, I can uh-huh. smell it for sure. I don't I don't know what the bottle is there, Tim Hortons. I don't know what that is. Should I know what that is? You should know. I know that name, Tim Horton. I, I feel bad. I, somebody in the chat correct us. What it what is Tim Hortons? What is that? It feels I feel like it's a steakhouse or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel uh, like it is. I, I, I love the shot. I love the very sort of casual nature of what this is. 
Um, I, I do wish that the cigarette pack and the bottle were arranged slightly differently just so that that vacant triangle <clears throat> in this top center wasn't there. You know, you could have pushed the cigarette lighter over or the pack of cigarettes, you know, just to just to fill the void a little bit or had something else there, you know, like a like a beer cap or I don't know, anything, anything could have been there just so that it wasn't okay. it wasn't voided. OK, so. Casimir says, uh, that's, uh, by the way, that's James Glenny. Um, he says, uh, that's a Canadian coffee and donut chain, Tim Hortons. Oh, okay. Okay. That explains it. Cause I am yeah. not Canadian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, right. what a great shot. Yeah. 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 Very... yeah that is fun. Uh, it is fun. And it's just, you know, it, it reminds me of my dislike of cigarettes. Cause I just don't like it. I don't like the the taste of cigarettes. I've tried them once or twice when I was a kid and like never went back. Uh Armando Armando Brooks uh, Armando Brooks says maybe this is the opposite of mundane. This Japanese person was loading one very traditional music instrument called a birimao. Birimao, I think I got. I think I got that right. Normally playing in the Bra the Brazilian fight called Capo. Yeah, why are you giving me all these names? Man? <laughs> <laughs> called C something or other. <laughs> you guys are trying to trip me up. I yep. was surprised and took 10 photos. Uh, and to make it more interesting, I made the composition and changed the color of his pants. Hold on, let's take a look. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. That's one guy. That's awesome. Yeah, he's yep. known for he's he's tricked us like this before. Armando has with the, the with the the composites where you have to like really take a second and look to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, definitely the opposite of mundane though. This is this is definitely in the uh, you know sort of the compositing multi image category. Um, yeah, but I did. Yep. I think the I think the story element of it is is really fun and the technique, right? Like the technique used to build this image is something that you know we should all look at and say, hey, you know, you can do more than just take a single snapshot. You know, from changing the color of the pants to showing this guy in in his walk through the space. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. And uh, what do you think of the composition, like from a technical standpoint? I, I I like the composition for the most part. I mean, the 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 lower left corner is a little vacant, and I wish that it wasn't. But I mean, you know, it's it's nice. You could rotate this and make it look like he's you know level the guy a little bit more. Let the background sort of go off kilter, which would be fine. Mm -hmm. And that way, you can get some of that foreground um, on an image like this, knowing that it's been composited, it's easy to see all of the clone tracks in the foreground. So when you're doing this kind of thing, you just got to be really meticulous about all the blending and making sure cigarette butts don't reappear and little nicks in the concrete don't repeat. You got to yeah, be the there. hardest. The hardest thing is, yeah, I hear what you're saying like, like, see right here, there's a little shadow or compositing artifact right there that you can see. Um, the biggest thing I think for me that would help sell this more is a little more shadow work in here. So you see how the, the feet yeah. are casting shadows here, you know, naturally. Um, back here, like the, this, this version of the guy is floating. He doesn't have a contact shadow or shadow under his feet where the guys behind him are clearly, like these guys back here are clearly casting a shadow, but these guys are not. So that kind of takes you out of the illusion a little bit. And the fact that this shadow here is cut off because the shadows are what connect us to reality. We're used to yep. seeing them and they have to, you know, if they're not there, our brains short circuit a little bit. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, there's a bunch of those little elements in here that I would certainly go in and, and tune up and then then you'd have a final image. But what a fun story. Yeah, very cool. I like multiplicity shots like that where you you. Yeah, I like it, when, especially because you change the color of the pants. So you literally if you just glance at it, you're like, oh, it's a bunch of, you know, guys walking. <laughs> some strange yeah. thing. But then you look close and you're like, oh, OK, I get it. All right. Thank you, Armando. Uh, next shot up is from Mark Charette. I like that. <laughs> Mark Charette says, breathe. Nothing more unintended, uh, naturally occurring or forgotten than that all animals somehow breathe. Even plants breathe. Yes, they do. Um, even the planet breathes. 
Thank you to Bond for letting me get close with that big black uh, clicky thing, the camera. <laughs> Look at that. See, that is just a fun shot. Let's see, well, I guess this one is, this would be, this would fit into that macro category kind of, right? Showing what? extreme yeah. close ups. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Most definitely. Yeah. I love the texture. Um, a little bit more depth of field ever so slightly so that the whole, the whole, you know, the front facing surface would be in focus. Um, mm -hmm. not, yeah, but, but not, not so much. I mean, I, I love the square crop. I love that. It looks, it looks great. Yeah. 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 I like this a lot because you I look at the shot and it just we've all or most of us have touched a dog's nose and we know that sandpapery feel <laughs> or the, the wet slimy feel with you know the rough but wet feel of a dog's nose. I, yeah. I, I love that. It kind of evokes that. And when you look close at this, it totally looks like a it looks like cracked desert. Right. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of texture that that, you know we wouldn't normally recognize that close. Like we wouldn't normally see that. We might see it from a distance and just recognize that there's texture, but this is where we get to see sort of the unseen or rarely seen world is by shooting macro coming in nice yeah. and close. Yep, for sure, for sure. And it oh, looks, like, the way... oh, it looks like a little shift in color in the back right corners too. It's like going a little blue. Oh right yeah, up. up here, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. What do you think of the border? The border and the key line treatment. People are going, see, we're seeing more and more creative border treatments. Multiple key lines, borders, and now we're seeing different tones that are taken from the image. Like, what, what are you starting here, Troy Miller? Uh, I, I'm not starting anything. I'm just continuing, you know, what's been going on. Um, it's a little too much. It's, I, I think that any time that your border or your key line distracts from the image, I think that it's a little too much. So in, in, my, in my opinion of this is take out, the thicker gray and thin the light gray leave the black is fine but just minimize all that stuff so it adds to the image but you don't really notice it right now it's a little dominating mm -hmm. yep yep i agree i knew you would i knew you'd call out that border right <laughs> of course it's my job happen oh i love it i love it oh uh low base guy is uh, throwing shade in the chat. He says, you heard it here first. TWIP supports underage smoking. TWIP does not support anything that is <laughs> illegal, including <laughs> underage smoking. However, I consider anyone under, let's say, 40 underage <laughs> or a kid. So, so there you go. If you're under 40, you're underage, you can smoke. Under 40 and over, what, 21 in California, 18 in most other states. Yeah. Don't All even right. know. Uh, next shot is from Nora Zanatnis. And Nora says, We are very fortunate to consider fresh running water in our homes as mundane. Preach. Truth. Right? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the truth. That is the truth. Fresh, run, fresh running water, electricity, always on high speed internet. <laughs> that, these, are, these are all first world luxuries that we all take for granted as being mundane. Yeah, we do. We do. I, I, this is a great shot. I love this. I don't know if it's, you know, silver or gold or, you know, what, what pewter or what color it is, but the fact it's monochromatic and um, we've got those simple tones going on, the simple shapes. I just, I love that. It's just, it tells a lot of story and it's easy to know what it is, but at the same time, it's very abstract. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, like, that is very cool. yeah she could have gotten even closer in this because, because faucets are you know, so mundane and so right. overlooked that you could just take a small piece of it and our brain would instantly know what it is. You don't have to be literal to show the whole thing. And something like this is a beautiful faucet, you know, so you could get closer on that. The challenge for a shot like this, because I've tried, a, I've done a shot like this, I'll post it later. Um, I did it around when, when the whole lockdown and everything was just starting. I did this whole series of washing your hands and wearing a mask and putting hand sanitizer in. Um, the challenge with my sink here, it's, it's, you know, chrome just like this as well, but it, uh, you know, you got to get yourself out of the shot. It's hard to get yourself. Yeah. It's hard not to photograph the photographer when you're shooting something as reflective as this. So. Right. Right. And just, just a note, I mean, like on this one, I probably would have shifted my perspective a little bit to the right to get rid of that little plunger handle in the back. Um, just just to simplify right just it's it's all about simplifying the shot 
that doesn't need to be there really to tell the story. We understand the faucet, the handle in the lower right, and then the faucet head itself. So maybe a little shift to the right. Mm-hmm. Yep. It'd be easier than trying to clone it out. And there's a border on here too. Craig Colvin, Craig Art. Colvin in the chat says key lines are a horrible trend and need to go away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you and know, I what? said, I said, amen, Craig Cole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just try to go hang something in the gallery. <laughs> yeah. Don't be batting it. And you'll I, be keep I don't it. think they're a horrible trend. I just, I think they're a tool, you know, you should, you know, use them, use them, use it accordingly. It's just another compositional element that we have at our disposal. Yeah. Usually haters are people that are unwilling to accept the truth. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's something a dictator would say. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I just heard that somewhere. I thought now's a good time to repeat it. <laughs> That's like, I don't want to know where you heard that from, Troy Miller, because that, that sounds like what some terrible people in history have said. <laughs> All right. Moving right along for Troy. <laughs> he digs his hole deeper. <laughs> All right. Next shot is from Tim Engel. Uh, Tim says some mundane fun. Tim has a baby face fetish or something. What's up with this baby face thing? I don't know. I don't know. He did this. He did this for his group. Uh, it was marshmallows. And so, of course, you know, he wraps a baby's face in marshmallows, a dirty doll baby face as well, uh-huh. which is a little bit funny and ironic. Um, yeah. it's a cool shot. I mean, it's, it's super fun. I think that, I think that I probably would have cropped it, uh, tighter and square and so that the mar- marshmallows weren't obvious what they were right like just go in tight on the baby's face and then have just the perimeter be the marshmallows and then kind of make you think like what the heck are those those can't be marshmallows can they um but in this case they're obvious but still a fun shot yeah very abstract interesting and and <clears throat> a clear departure from from tim ingle's normal fashion work so right I just don't get it. I, Tim, you'll have to chime in and let us know what the significance of this baby face thing is. There's got to be some underlying, <laughs> you know, uh, anarchist message or something. In there. He makes he's he's got a mask that he made from a baby face. I know. I saw that. But what does that mean? I don't, even, I don't know. I don't even know. He just, he, you know, you know, Tim, he likes creepy. And I think it's just shock value, you know. Maybe. OK. All right. Who am I to judge? But I like the shot. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, I, I like it for the, the creativity. I don't know if this is mundane, though. I mean, I don't... Maybe it's mundane if you got a kid that likes creepy baby dolls like this and marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chucky. All right, Tim Engel. Thank you, sir. Next up is Michael Rhino. Michael Rhino says... My entry for mundane is... Uh, is this boring poll that I came across while walking the dog during this morning sunshine or sunrise? Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. That's mundane. You know, like normally you walk that dog, you just look straight ahead, right? Or to the left and right. And you know, this would have worked in the looking up critique as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm just looking at it, and my my brain is very very happy about the balance and symmetry in this image, where, you know, the 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 lines are leaving the top corners, you know, the same. The pole is centered at the bottom. Um, it looks very vertical, and I'm pretty sure it's vertical. So, mm-hmm. it it's symmetry. It's just it's great and it's simple. And it need this one needs to be color right. I thought maybe black and white would be fun to play with, and it still might, but you'll lose the power lines against the gray clouds. So the color in this one really, really helps stand off. I think off. you need the color in this one because he said he shot this at sunrise and you kind of need that warm sunrise light to kind of sell it. If that's that's what your goal is, to sell that you took this at sunrise. And you know, I'm, I'm surprised that the, uh, you know, the OCD attention to detail version of Troy Miller didn't bring this into Photoshop and drag a guide out to make sure that pole <laughs> was vertical. <laughs> It's not that far off if it's off. It's it's very close. <laughs> See, now you want to do it. Now you now, want to do it, right? <laughs> now I want to do it. That's just not even right. That's not even fair. To... 
<laughs> you can't not do it now. See, <laughs> it's like you can't you can't not organize your garage like Craig Colvin showed you during that mixer. <laughs> with the oh. Well, I did do a bunch of reorganizing, so it's getting better. But <laughs> yeah. I don't have any more space. All right, very cool shot. So this one, very cool. What a lot of a lot of mundanity. A lot of mundanity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark Harris is up next. He says, for the mundane critique topic, I recently posted a blog link about a project I did photographing our unmade bed for 10 mornings. That's cool. This yeah. is one I particularly like. Fairly mundane, but interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is Very super cool. cool. That is definitely, yeah, definitely one of my favorites, without a doubt. Yeah, I love I love this image a lot. <clears throat> and the series. I want to see the series of, of shots. That That's like, that's an intimate you know, sort of uh, revelation of your personal life, right? Like the, yeah. where you sleep, especially right after you get up, is is highly personal, right? Yep. And this, and he's letting the world kind of take a look at that. That's that's really interesting. Yeah, and I thought I thought it was really super cool when I saw it, and then I noticed the cat, and I thought, oh, that's great because it just makes it all that much more real. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. And by yep. the way, I just brought that pole up in Photoshop. It is leaning to the right. <laughs> <laughs> i knew you would <laughs> it, it's like it's pixels it's pixels but i can see it um but anyway sorry sorry mark Harris. that's what uh, makes you a professional i can imagine like we got to do another watch me work session while we look at you edit a wedding and how meticulous you are as you go through all the photos that's uh yeah, you know, that's the mark of a professional, not to just say, yeah, yeah, it's good enough and move on to the next one. If one or two pixels off gnaws at the base of your spine, <laughs> you got to your Kill skull. It. It's a curse. I'm telling you, even like building furniture or stuff, I have to build everything with, with uh, sine wave lines and curves because if it's straight, if it's off, even, you know, a 32nd of an inch, it'll drive me nuts forever. I can't do straight lines. I can see the imperfections. So, wow. yeah. So we got off topic. I didn't mean to distract from Mark Harris's uh, amazing, you know, morning shots. Yeah, I, I like the shot. I want to see I get, Mark Harris. You got you got to post the rest of them. I want to see the series. I want to see this in context. Mm hmm. Yep, I love it. I love it. I really, I really enjoy this a lot. It's it's very comfortable. It's very familiar. It's very easy to relate to this. Yep. Um, and it, it kind of, it's one of those things that no matter where you are kind of in your day or how you feel, you know, this is a place of comfort and I'm surprised that we don't see more photos, you know, of, of our comfortable spots like the bed or, or the, the corner of the couch or whatever that might be. So I, I really appreciate that he found this and that he's yeah. that he in the shot. So, yeah. And I love the monochromatic nature of this. I really do. So there's no distracting colors or anything like that in there i like that it doesn't have a key line on it <laughs> uh, you know it would do well with a nice presentation it could do really well <laughs> you know what i gotta agree with some people in chat are, are we're talking about in a gallery is where you show the key you put a frame on things that's where i lay you know it's like if you <laughs> but it's weird it's weird because yes that's true in a gallery you want to have like your fancy mat and your frame and hanging on the wall with the spotlight on and all that Yes, but 99.9999% of the photos out there are never going to hang in a gallery. So you know, a it's... reasonable sort of facsimile of a gallery experience, I agree, is to put a border or a key line on it. So. All right. Well, you know, just spend some time actually putting key lines and borders on them and then compare. Mm, I've done it. I mean, I've, I literally cut off the tip of my finger cr cutting real mats. <laughs> so I, I have a photo that's framed in my house that has blood from like 1990 on it. <laughs> I had to cut a mat to put in there. All right. Mark Harris. Thank you, sir. All right. Next shot up is from Lamb. It's going to make us hungry. Lamb says entry for the theme mundane. Let's have a feast, guys, by the leader ant, which managed to crawl through the netting searching for food. Is there an ant in here? Where? Did you see the ant? I don't see an ant. Where is the leader ant? Or is he just trying, is he just making a story out of it? There's actually no ant in here. I don't see anything in there. Because there's a lot of sugar that would, that would draw ants. I'm sure right, right, right. Yeah. 
Very cool. Very fun. Shout out. I like how simple and how clean it is. I like how, it, you know, immediately again, we all know what it is. And so that's kind of where the mundane is, right? The mundane doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't require baby dolls and uh, marshmallows to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get into your psyche like, like Tim Ingle. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is cool. No, I, like, I think I, I like the shot, but look, looking at, not but, but looking at the grid pattern back there I want and the and the translucency of the plate I would love to have seen more light play in this shot like shadows from a light source shining through that grid onto the plate and maybe you know that we see a little bit of light play down here a diffraction of the shadows coming through the plate I want to yeah. see more of that they, uh, that would have been really interesting. And then, you know, you get that that sort of light and shadow play and patterns in there. Then throw a little little bit of a hint of a vignette on it to then draw us into the middle. That would have been right. interesting. And it would, have, it would have made that background make more sense. Yeah, and the top right corner and the right side of the image is a little vacant. So, you know, burning that down with the vignette or maybe rearranging the, the plate a little bit so that the right side of the plate is filled as well. Um, but I, I, you know, again, this is one of those images very much like Mark Harris's that I think we can all relate regardless of the culture that we're in. Like we get it, you know, there's my tea or there's my coffee or whatever. And then there's, you know, some snacks. Yeah. So I love that. It would be a good series. Again, this is one of those storytelling images that are timeless and communicates across so many different cultural lines. This is like, <clears throat> this is like a frame of life right after Mark Harris's shot. So right. You, you got up. You get up. Now you're at the breakfast table, get a bite, and having your morning tea or coffee before you get to work. And whether you like key lines or not, we can all agree that we like our snacks. Yes. Yes. We do. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Lamb. Very nice. Craig Colvin is up next. Craig says. <laughs> mundane is a great topic. Yeah. Like, then, yeah. Then it went on and on in the chat. Great, great, great. Uh, I know. I know. What I thought would be really funny is to put an airplane right at the top in the center in there. Oh yeah, that would remember, be cool. That, remember that image? The one, the one that was faked. That, yeah. That someone. Yeah. yeah uh huh. Yeah, you'd have put some clouds up there and then put the, <laughs> a shot of a plane up there. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. But what a great perspective. I, I think this is one of the fun things to do with topics like this is that there's always, always a different perspective, always. And the places that we can put our cameras to get those shots, um, we should all try for that as opposed to like what our standard, oh, you know, I'm going to get out the big camera and I'm going to point it at this object, you know, landscapes or, you know, lunar events or, you know, models. There's cool images everywhere. Yep. Yep. Just got to look close. There's cool images sitting right with, you know, everyone that's in this chat room, probably on the desk or, or on their lap or on their computer right now that, that you could make stuff out of. Especially in your office. You, I mean, I could go in your yep. office and probably create 150,000 images in there. <laughs> it's just, there's yeah, nothing I, but patterns and textures in there. <laughs> yeah, too much. But this it's is a great opposite of my office. My office is very sparse and, and minimalistic and Scandinavian in nature. <laughs> very clean yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. What you're saying yeah i'm sorry what'd you say you were cut off a little bit you're saying i'm messy i'm messy and disorganized uh i no, i would i would use the term eclectic <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm good with that <laughs> yeah there you go. All right. What do you think of this shot uh, overall other than the compositing a uh, a plane in that void in the, in the middle at the top it's 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 wonderful. And I really like the fact that the center or the top, the the vacant square, right, that we're looking out of is on above the fold. It's above the horizon. So it's in the upper third. To me, it mm -hmm. makes it really feel better than if it was perfectly centered. And it gives it a sense of distance and space, right? Like it's something we could walk to. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. I struggled with that a little bit, you know, because part of me wants to look at it and like, I want perfect symmetry with this. And then I thought about it and I'm like, that's easy. I mean, to go perfect right. symmetry, if you go off a little bit, it adds a little bit of tension or, you know, a little bit more tension and it makes you, it pulls you into the image more. So yeah, I, I think, I think I like it. Yeah. I like it that way. Yeah. There's really not a whole else uh, th that I would add to it. I mean, I, I like it just like that. So I think, I think Craig did a great job with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Thank you, Craig Colvin. <clears throat> Next shout up is from Stephen Sharp, whom, by the way, is yep. going in for surgery today. So yes. everyone, send your send your your warm wishes and good vibrations to Stephen Sharp for a for a successful surgery and a quick recovery. Right. He says the Amtrak California on its daily run to parts south. Wow. There you go. That's, That's cool. cool. That's not mundane though. I guess it'd be, you know, this it, would be mundane if you lived over there by this train. <laughs> you know? And that's what I was going to say is like, like to me, this is not mundane at all. But to somebody who drives by it every day and sees this, this is this could be very mundane. Right. You see it. You see it all the time. So um, I I really love this image. And it it speaks to me in the fact that we've got these wonderful leading lines that also dissect the image into two pieces. You know, the the sky, the train is in a space where, you know, we can see it moving into the frame. And then you got all those graphical elements of the bridge itself. Yeah. Not triangles. mundane as in boring, um, but certainly mundane for somebody who sees it all the time. They're used to seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, the shot is made up of a ton of triangles. You see them? I mean, it's it's literally... A bunch of triangles making up the shot. You know what I was thinking, though, when I was looking at this, and I haven't pulled this into Photoshop, but I was thinking, Troy's going to say something about that horizon. Is that horizon <laughs> level? Is that horizon perfectly level? And if it isn't, does it matter in this shot? Because it's kind of doing the whole vanishing vanishing point thing. Yeah, on, a, on an image like this, the hard thing is to keep, because you only have one horizon that is sort of obstructed by all these other objects. <clears throat> What's more important is all the verticals. And, you know, if you get parallax or you get converging lines in an image like this, what will happen is the far left vertical will be perfect and the far right vertical will not be right. They'll 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 lean. <clears throat> and so going making sure that all those verticals are, are correct is very difficult to do. And it seems to me, uh, that, you know, my my go go gadget level of brain is telling me this is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like the processing too. You know, it's it's, it's we when we when we see a a correctly, you know, it, and I use the word correctly subjectively, um, but when we see a correctly processed black and white image where it's got you know decently thick blacks and not blown out highlights and and a good number of midtones in between, we we tend to overlook that, right? And then so we we start looking at the shot itself versus being drawn into the processing of the shot. And I think he succeeded definitely with this one because it feels it feels right when you look at it. Yeah, I, I, I do think the shadows are pulled up a little bit too much in this one. I think that they should probably go down. And I don't I don't know if it's just me or I, I tend to see this as a trend a lot in images where um, the photographer's trying to pull detail out of the shadows just because they can. And in reality, we don't always need to pull detail out. You know, the, the image on the stream to me looks better than the image in Mighty uh, mm -hmm. because I think there I I'm of the of the camp that there are pure blacks in almost every situation. And so we need that. We need that zone. Right. Ansel Adams talked about the zone system, pure black to pure white and all the steps in between. So deep underneath the bridge, I think that that should be more black. I think it should be more dark. Because so I think you don't want to see that detail. You don't want to see the detail underneath the train because you would lose that if it went any more black. That's going black. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I do. I do want to see it mm -hmm. go down almost to an imperceptible level, because I think if you're standing there, your eyes are going to are going to dilate for the highlights, which is what our eyes do. We will be able to see details in the shadows, but they're blacker shadows. You know, they're mm -hmm. dark richer shadows so this idea that because our cameras now have tonal range that we can pull those shadow details out doesn't mean that we always should you know um interesting go you more like jeff, you, sound, you sound like jeff goldblum from jurassic park <laughs> one <laughs> nature will find a way just because we could do a thing doesn't necessarily mean yeah. we should do a thing you know, because it, it, it kind of becomes a faux HDR in a way where we're using the tonal range of the camera and we're, we're stretching out that range, that dynamic range so much that now it really doesn't feel natural anymore. Mm -hmm. I love the conversion. I love what he's done. I don't know if Mighty has, has somehow, you know, affected that. Um, 
Yeah, but I, well, you know, Mighty Mighty has a sledgehammer and dynamite when you, whenever you give it an image and it tends to destroy it. You know what I, I think about this, though? I think about um, when I look at shots like this, I think about the the fun, and I use fun, you know, I'm stretching the truth with fun. But I use, you know, the, the fun in trying to print these kind of things. I remember when I got my first Epson, large format Epson printer, and how much of a shock it was that, and this is this is before I calibrated anything, of course, but how much of a shock and how much time it took and wasted money and paper and ink it took to try to get the print to look like what I saw on my screen. <laughs> so right. So we're we're like we're looking at this shot of Stevens and we're kind of obsessing about the nuances of the amount of shadow detail underneath that bridge. But if you print this, it's a whole different ball game, right? Because yeah. this is not what you're going to see on that final print. Right. And and something to consider with this image is that the border that he put on there um, is a is a is a sign of how black the black should be, right? Like that's pure black. So mm -hmm. the image is a little bit flat on contrast. So yeah. you know we have to compare those kind of things when we look at them visually, but. Printing is always, I, I don't like to print my own stuff. Printing is just, yeah. E yeah, it's just evil. Yeah. That was the exercise of getting that printer and spending that money on it was, you know, doing the, the time math of, okay, all this effort <laughs> for something that's still not quite right. And I could have just FTP'd this over to Bay Photo or Miller's and they would have nailed it <laughs> and sent me back a mounted version of this ready to go. <laughs> I always love my lab, but I love them more when I started doing my own printing. Mm -hmm. so, you appreciate them more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Craig, Craig Colvin says it looks black on YouTube uh, or in, on the YouTube feed and it looks better than the image on Twit Pro. Yeah, because Twit Pro compresses the heck out of everything. Thanks, Craig Colvin. See, that's the magic of doing these live, these live streams because the community can chime in and I can bring them into the chat. I love it. Right. Hey guys, I'm I'm experimenting with a uh, with something that we may start rolling out next week. Troy knows about it because he helped me test it, um, but it should allow me to do even more interactive things like this in our in our um, mixers, etc. All right, Stephen Sharf, next shot up is from Michael Duray. I haven't seen Michael Duray in a in a couple weeks in the in the mixers. Where are you at, Michael Duray? Uh, closed. Michael DeRay's living the life of the nomad. I love that. I, yeah. I live vicariously through that guy. I want to be him. I, I I really like this image. I'm I'm one. I'm just I'm playing with certain crops. I'm just kind of looking at like how to minimize. Um, you know that it's how the subject, right? I you're you're my brain is fighting the same thing. My brain is like, okay, what's the subject here? Is it the is it the the closed barriers on the road or is it that home in the back with the dog that's partially obscured by the american flag back there right and then i look over to the left and my brain gets trapped over there and i'm like okay what's going on and what's under those tarps what's in there what are you hiding <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> what's what's going on in there and then we got stop signs that are pointing the wrong direction which is making me uneasy you know so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I wish that this was a shot that was taken from a higher angle to minimize the background. Or I wish the background was was dark all the way across the back so that the barriers would really, really stand out. And, and, and in a situation like this, if I was to walk up on this and say, wow, this is really cool. I need to find a way to photograph this. That would be the first thing that I would do is how to minimize the distractions in the background. Right. And, and, and maybe that's just photographing a piece of this against the asphalt or getting down really low and shooting it up into the trees to get rid of those those distractions. I, yeah. I love the yellow and, and the, the clothes signed on there. Like I like all that. Like that's very attractive photographically. Um, we do have a lot of the distractions going on in the background, though. I wonder if, if the subject of the shot, let's say it is those those barriers um, and he wanted to sort of demonstrate that. Would this would the would this shot have been more effective if he got close on say that front, this front barrier here, um, and used the remaining ones back here as the background and done like shallow depth of field close up, you know, so that it, it becomes all about that yellow and asphalt, and everything else is ancillary. 
you know. Yeah, I mean, immediately when I walk in, I, I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm assuming this was taken at, at normal standing height because it feels like it was, is I, I see the right side of the front barrier. I see the little barrier next to it. And then I see that dark area in the left where you got those covered vehicles or golf carts or something. I'm thinking, ooh, I'm going to slide to the right. <clears throat> I'm going to kneel down, get close to the barriers, focus on those, and hopefully isolate them into that darkness there, into that tree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just... Yeah, and that's just that's just behavior of learning to see a scene so that you can folk get your get your image to show what it is that you see is the most important, right? Like the, get rid of the distractions in the frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just take yep, thousands. That's it. I mean, that, that's part of that's you know that's a rule to live by. Maybe we'll make that one of those little snippets that I publish. Get rid of the distractions in the frame <laughs> by Troy Miller. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. That's what you got to do. And I mean, I, I've been doing that for such a long time with weddings, right? Because I'll, I'll walk out of the front of a hotel or, or a facility and I got to do these romantic portraits and this is my background. Like I get this as my background. So I have to figure out how not to, you know, one, how to use it, but two, how to remove it or make it less obvious. So yeah, you got to MacGyver those MacGyver the scene. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you, Michael DeRay. Next shot up is from Craig Stampley, Concrete. Did you see the series he posted? Inside no. Twip Pro? Oh, you no. got to look at it. What an amazing series he put together. It was just, it's fantastic. All from this location with this model in various positions. Um, and it just, yeah, it's, it's literally works of art. I'm just amazed that he can even go down there and do that. If 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 we did that anywhere in Southern California, anywhere we'd be arrested in five minutes. Uh, just coming yeah. close to putting somebody out like that. Um, but yeah. good for him for for thinking. I know he's been planning it for a while too, so I'm glad to see it sort of come to fruition. Um, I love the image. Not not very mundane. <laughs> not much. <laughs> Speak for yourself, man. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> no, this is yeah, definitely not not mundane. So you 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 failed in that respect, <laughs> Craig Stanfield. Yeah. This is definitely this is anti mundane. But yeah. I I mean I I love the juxtaposition of the you know the hard concrete, very clinical, you know almost Orwellian kind of feel to the shot right. with a delicate beautiful woman laying you know inexplicably yep. in there. <laughs> yep. So what's the what's the story of this, right? If you look at it from a story standpoint, what what's the story of this shot? Why is she there? Why like if you yeah, leave, I, leave a script around this Troy, why 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 is she in this shot? What is she do, what is she doing right there? You no, know, she's she's just very upset at the moment and she's she took a swim, you know, decided like to hell with it all, like she's going to do what she wants to do in her life and she took a swim and she came out here on she climbed up there and now she's just you know, contemplating life and what she's going to do. And now she doesn't know where her clothes are. <laughs> oh, no. there, there you go. Okay. We'll uh, go with that. We'll go, with, we'll go with that one. Yeah. Um, I dig the shot though. There's, there's really two things in this image that I had. There's a couple things. So one, all those points of light, I find very distracting. Um, I realize that they're light poles and I realize that, that they're there, but I think that for the most part, the points of light are distracting and, and I would take those out even, even so far as taking the light poles out. Cause mm. I don't think that they add a lot to it. The light streaking down the side of the building. I know that that's to me, that's very distracting, but yeah, Moro, yeah. um, just just if you if you're looking at the image in the stream and you're looking at the image on mighty i think you can really see the differences the image on the stream to me is the correct exposure uh the highlight on her body and the rest of the shadows just let them fall away so that there's this infinite distance in the image you know let it let it go really dark bring those blacks in and so she just just barely shows up like you know almost almost obscured by the light yeah yeah i like it it draws you in, definitely. And yeah. uh, Twit Pro members, I encourage you to go look at the rest of the series because it is it's fantastic. It's some of, I would argue, some of Craig Stanfley's uh, best work that I've seen. Yeah. Very nice. 
All right, moving on to the next one. A couple more. Who's this guy? <laughs> Brick. Brick. Yeah, I thought I thought a brick was mundane. So, found I, yeah. I shot this a long time ago out in the middle of the desert, and there was this big. There used to be like this um, camp there, like there was this mining camp, and these are all the things that were left behind: shoes and pieces of brick and stuff like that. And I just I remember spending hours in there photographing it. So, when I when we talked about mundane, I thought of I thought of how mundane the brick is, but that's it, and just very grungy. Yeah, I like it. This is what you throw through someone's window, right? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, Frederick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's right. it. Yeah. It's simple. Like it. Yep. Very cool. This is mundane, though. This is about as mundane as it gets. <laughs> Brick. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Troy Miller. All right. Last but not least, Peter Lebschen, also known as Master Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> Canon 5D manhole cover on the street in Japan. Yeah, that's super cool. Wouldn't that wouldn't that encourage theft to make them beautiful? <laughs> Only in this country. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I think they could they could do beautiful stuff like that in public and not have to worry about it walking away in in Japan or Tokyo. Yeah, I, I I really like this a lot. I think it's I think it's instantly recognizable as something, some kind of covering, maybe not a manhole cover, right? Because we don't really have scale for size. But I love the fact that like we know that's asphalt. I, I just wish that it was rotated clockwise, right? Like it. I wish it wasn't taken from the side. I wish that he had walked around and taken it from what would be the front of the manhole cover. It's cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Peter, I think I would have popped that yellow a little bit. Would you have popped that yellow out? Or maybe it's just the way I'm looking at it. Actually, um, no. You know, on Mighty, it looks muted. And in the stream, the yellows are popped a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I like it. I think I like it like this, where it's a little flatter and dirtier. And, you know, it's it's obviously been run over a, a few million times. So, yeah, no, I'm good with it. I mean, black and white might be cool. But if I saw this, I would want to get in tight and shoot more of a more of a macro abstract kind of thing. Try to pick up some of the shapes and a little bit of the color, a little corner of the blue, you know, something like that. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. All right. The moment of truth, man. We're at Ooh. the moment of truth. You got to pick a favorite. Do you have a favorite? You have a favorite child? I do. I do. My my favorite is Mark Harris. I love I love that uh, I love that bedroom scene, the bed, the cat, the ruffled sheets. Yeah, I love that. I love that a lot. Let's see if we can't bring Mark Harris's shot up here. This one? Yes. Yeah. 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 I tend to like that. For me, it's it's yeah, I, I would go with this one as the favorite. So congratulations, Mark Harris. This is this is this week's favorite. Um I also like uh, I mean they're all great, but I like the dog nose too from Mark Charette. I think that was <laughs> yeah. It was really, really killer. You just, you know, talk about mundanity, you know, something that you see every day. Not everyone has a dog or a pet, <laughs> but you yeah. know, that that is there's millions of these things floating around out there. <laughs> so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good series. Good series. Mm -hmm. So yeah, next? just a lot of, a lot of good shots. A lot of good shots. What, uh, what, what should we do for, or actually we picked it already, didn't we? Well, we yeah, you had, I was gonna, I was back in your text, you had something, uh, you had I something right here. I said, I said critique number 128 will be the real me, the real me. Expose an often unseen aspect of yourself via self-portrait. An often unseen aspect of yourself via mm. self-portrait. That's challenging. I know what you're gonna do, Troy. You're gonna like, it's gonna be you in a welder's mask with sparks flying or something, right? No, I've, or I've just, been... just your hands doing the unchained melody pottery thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nope. See, it's been seen. It's been done. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
Yeah. Yep. yep. So this should be interesting. It'll be interesting to get a to get a good, you know, or at least another perspective into what the membership is, right? And who's in there and what they're doing and what they like to do. Because we we see one dimension, you know, when people show up in either you know within the community and posting images or in the member mixers or whatever, but. I have a feeling that there are many more facets to our community than the, than meets the eye. We got a community of icebergs and we only see the tip. So I'm saying <laughs> go down true. below the waterline, go below the waterline and let's let, reveal a little bit more of yourself. Talk about challenging. That's a challenging topic, right? To, it's one of thing course. to shoot something mundane that is completely disconnected from you. It's quite another thing to look inward and say, you know, what can I, what can I tell people about me? that I'm willing to share publicly, you know, and then make it, make it artful. So it's going to be interesting. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yep. All right. Well, let's roll this one. This is a wrap. Uh, any final thoughts before we close it off? Be safe and go take some photos. Yes. Yeah. Be safe. Go shoot and uh, do some, do some crazy stuff. You know what I'm, I'm actually playing with this week is, I'm toying with the idea of, well, I only want to, I'm not even going to tell you. <laughs> <'Cause> I'm, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. Should I say it? No, I'm not even going to say it. It has to do with the podcast and, and uh, ev evolving the podcast or devolving the podcast, as it were. So we'll see. More on that later, more later this week on that. All right. So, yeah. So, folks, you have your topic for, for this coming critique a week from today. Critique 128 will be the real me. Expose an often unseen aspect of yourself via a self-portrait. Remember, a self-portrait doesn't necessarily have to have your face in it. It could, you know, it's just, let's just leave it at that. It doesn't have, necessarily have to be a selfie, um, especially for this audience. So get creative. Show us what you can do. Do some crazy stuff. Uh, I'm afraid to see what Tim Ingle's going to submit. <laughs> so we have to pre-screen that one. But otherwise, we're good. We are good. Cool. Well, folks, we will see you in the next critique uh, a week from today. And everyone have a good, safe, and sound week. And a lot of you will see in the member mixer uh, yep. on Friday, right? All right. Sounds great. Oh, oh, true. Oh, I almost clicked. My finger was like hovering above the in-stream button. What? Uh, <laughs> did you finish that table that you that you mentioned in the in the mixer? Is that table all done and finished and ready to go? And are there pictures online where the community can go look at it? Uh, no, but there can be. I can I can put some pictures in the in the feed. Yeah, I'll throw some images yes. up. Yeah, it was yeah, delivered because yeah, that was a couple days ago. Nice, nice. And you only charged them, what was it, like 25 grand for that table? <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, something yeah. like that, yeah. Somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, the friend's price. Okay, there you go. All right, guys, uh, we'll see you in the next critique, and uh, have fun. Go take pictures. Yep, Peace. yeah, take care, everybody.